let's get into our presentation here today. Uh, so again, that's the idea of what is Google Apps, um, you know, why, why you might choose Google Apps, and then we're really just going to get into the examples for use um, and some resources after that. Uh, so real quick, what it is, again, free suite of web-based tools provided by Google for schools to use. Uh, you got things like Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Docs, Google Chat, Google Sites, Google Video, and many, many, many more. Um, it does replace some tools, like we used to use Outlook and now we use Gmail, and other times it supplements tools, like uh, we still have Office and, and uh, for our teachers and for, for most of our students, but it's a supplement to that. Um, why might you choose to roll out Google Apps? Why might you choose to use it? Um, got about six or seven points here I'll hit real quick. Uh, the first is the access anywhere and anytime. Doesn't matter. Uh, as long as you've got an internet connection, you've got your stuff. Um, because Google Apps does give you access anywhere, anytime. Doesn't matter if you've got a PC, a Mac, a laptop, a desktop, a smartphone, a tablet, if you're at home, if you're at school, you can extend the learning experience outside of the building, outside of the normal school day. Um, Compatibility is another great thing about it because it doesn't matter what, um, you know, where you're at, you're using the same version of the program anywhere you are. We don't have the issues anymore of kids bringing in things from a different version of Office than we have at school. It's modular. You can pick just the pieces you want. If you just want to roll out email, great. If you don't want to roll out email, that's fine. Roll out docs. You know, you can pick and choose what you want to roll out. Uh, it does get frequently updated. That's another great thing. Um, every week there's something new being added to Docs or something new in uh, Gmail or something new in Sites. Google is always doing a fantastic job of adding new uh, features. Uh, it is easy but powerful so that students and staff can pick it up real quick, but that doesn't mean that it's simple. You can do really complex, really powerful things with Google Apps. And of course it's free. We all love that. There, isn't, there are no hidden costs. It is absolutely, totally free for schools to use. Um, another really nice benefit of it is um, sharing. Um, I'll spend just a little bit more time chatting about this. Anything you create with Google Apps, whether it's um, a calendar appointment, whether it's a Google site, whether it's a document, a spreadsheet, a presentation, a form, they can all be shared with other people who are in your school or outside of your school. That's fine too. And you can share them as read-only or you can share them as editable so that people can collaborate together. And that is just you know, one of the transformative things about using Google Apps. Uh, for example, I got a few quick you know, uh, uh, points here, uh, like you could collaborate with your colleagues. And I'll show some examples of these when we really get into that bulk of the, of the presentation. But you can collaborate with your colleagues. If you're writing a grant, one person could start the document, share it with all the other people on the grant writing team, and then you all can just work together on it live. If you're both on it at the same time, while you're typing and they're typing, you can actually see their words just appearing on, on the screen there as you're typing together on this document. That'd be great for team newsletters or if you're doing lesson plans as, as a grade level or as a team. Um, you can collaborate with your colleagues. Uh, students can work together on group projects. And we're seeing more and more and more of that where when the students do their group projects, they're doing a Google presentation and they're all divvying up the work, but they're all working on the slides together at the same time and not later having to try to figure out how to merge them together because they're all just one file to begin with. Uh, you can share handouts and forms with students and parents, maybe make them read only so they can just see them and make a copy for themselves. Uh, students can fill out electronic surveys and quizzes uh, with, with Google Forms. It's a great way to do assessments, and uh, you can even have Google grade them for you. There's a little uh, plug-in into, into the uh, Google Forms and Google Spreadsheets tool that will grade the quizzes for you as well. Um, and of course, students can turn everything in um, without having to print it out. Uh, any document they create, any presentation, any whatever, they can share to you as a teacher and then you can grade it, you can leave comments on it, and the file never actually gets printed out. It's all just shared that way. Um, uh, Gmail has uh, been a fantastic way to allow us to easily communicate with large groups of staff, with students, and with parents. Let me kind of explain how that works. I'm going to follow a link here to pop me on out to, this, to the Apps User Group site where I've linked in a few things. First of all is our staff mailing lists. What we've done is, um, we used to do this with, with Outlook as well, but um, we've transferred this over to Google Apps, is we have about 80 or 90 
listservs or email lists that um, in our district they all start off with list dash. We've used that to kind of make it clear that they're a list serve. Uh, so for, for example, list dash grade one at northcantonschools.org. That email address would go to all of our grade one teachers. So it's very easy to quickly send an email message to them. Likewise, very easy to share a document with them. If I have a document that I want to share out, I can share it with these groups as well. So this is good for emailing, it's good for sharing, it's good for inviting people to a calendar event, all of those different things. The groups can be used for any of those. But we've done that for all sorts of things. So we've got, you know, list-hs-math for all the high school math teachers, or, you know, list dash um, probably have one called list-pe for all the PE teachers across the district and so on and so on. So this has allowed us to really have great communication very easily to share ideas and questions among our staff. Well, we extended the same thing to our parents and our students. I'll show you how that works. Um, we did not have student email accounts prior to moving to Google Apps. Uh, we ran an exchange server and we had certain limitations. We, you know, that would be an awful lot more to bring on for us to manage. But once we went to Google Apps, hey, it was fantastic. They host it, they take care of it, piece of cake. So we went ahead and gave all of our students K-12. They all have email addresses now. Certainly the younger kids aren't using them quite so much, but they, they all have them. Um, so what we did is we created student mailing lists. Now, I can't list them all out because there's thousands of them by the time they all get created, but here's the idea. For example, stu-dash followed by the building would be all the students in that building. So if we need to send a message to all the middle school kids, stu-ms at northcantonschools.org, boom, there's all the middle school students. They've just received a message or a document has been shared to them or something like that. Or break it down to grade level, stu-dash 07, all of the seventh graders. Or uh, break it down to the students that are attached to a staff member because we pull information from Dazzle, our student record system. You could do it different ways. That, that's how, how we're doing it. Um, Stu dash the staff member's um, ID, so like Stu dash Smith J at northcantonschools.org would be all of Smith J's students. So he could very easily send out an email to every student that's attached to him through the Dazzle schedules. Uh, with that listserv, or go down to periods, stu-smith-j-08 is all his eighth period students. And so it's a very easy way to quickly communicate with the students and to share things with them. We then did the same for our parents. We did not create parent Gmail accounts. We have not given our parents Gmail accounts. Not that we couldn't, but parents don't want another account. They don't want another email. That's you know not something that I think would, would work so well. Instead, we collected their real life Hotmail, Yahoo, Gmail, whatever accounts they have, and we imported them into our lists. And so we've got pair dash all these things. So if you want to send out a message to all the parents of the 10th graders for an upcoming meeting, pair dash 10 at uh, northcantschools.org, we just emailed all the parents. And so we've really been able to increase communication very well through using Gmail and using the group features that are in Gmail. So that's just a quick example of some Gmail usage. So, um, anyway, that was a little bit about Gmail. I'll mention quickly also while we're talking about Gmail, there are some chat features built into it, and that's been a nice way also to increase communication. Um, while you're in Gmail, you can see who else is online if they so choose to let themselves be seen, and you can quickly open up a chat window where you can text chat with them, or if they've got a web camera, you can actually see them, and you can do voice and video chat as well. And that's been a great way for people to quickly just, you know, connect with somebody else in a different building to ask a, a quick question, and I've had people do that. I'll be working along, and boop, my little chat window will pop up, and people will have questions for me as well. What we've got here, we've been using Google Calendar extensively uh, for lots of things. All of our um, building calendars, are done through Google Calendar now, as well as um, many of our uh, teachers do all of their homework, all their classes, have calendars attached to them. Um, different organizations and groups and teams are using them as well. Um, we, and I'll show you examples of each of these. Uh, we use Google Calendar to sign up for all of our computer labs. 
so that people can, can reserve computer labs. Uh, the homework hotline that we used to do at the middle school has been replaced with entirely Google calendars now. And this year we did something new too, our parent-teacher conferences. We used to schedule those um, by hand or we would, you know, there was a service we paid for for a while. We are doing that entirely this year now through Google calendars at, at, at our middle school and it's worked really well. And of course it's just great for more organized meetings to know who's attending a meeting and, and who's not and to share information prior to the meeting. Well, let me show you some examples of, of some of these then. Uh, let me, so for example, at our middle school, if I go to uh, our calendars, I want to go to the interactive middle school calendar. Uh, this is just a Google Calendar that's been embedded in the website. And so all of these events get put in there by a secretary or a principal who's been trained on how to do that, and the calendar's been shared to them in edit mode so that they can make edit changes to that. So that's nice. Uh, same thing for like our, um, I'll open up our technology page. So like for example, here is um, the computer lab in room 107. And so people can come in and see what is open and what is closed, which periods are available. And then they have a Google form they can use. If you click here, it opens up a form where they can go in and put in their name and the dates they want, what periods they want, what their grade level and subject area is. And we just use that kind of to collect information to see our certain subject areas or certain grade levels using the labs more than others. And that will submit a request that can then be put on the calendar. That's one way to do it. There's lots of different ways you could reserve the calendars. But again, that's just a Google Calendar embedded on there. Um, I mentioned about the homework hotline. So if I'm at the middle school and I go to homework calendars, now the parents can come here. We've got a little video tutorial for them and a little printable handout if they're not sure how all this works. Kind of explains all that to them. But here are all the teachers at our middle school. And if I want to see, okay, what you know homework is coming up, they can pick the teacher, they can pick the class, and it will open up that calendar form, and they can see the homework for that teacher. Now, in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a plus Google Calendar button. If you click that, it will ask you, do you want to add this calendar to your calendars? And so what the staff does is they have the students come down early in the year, sit down, go through and click on all of their teachers, and click that plus Google Calendar button, and it adds those calendars onto the student's personal calendar. So now the student sees all their homework for all their classes on their personal calendar, and then they teach them how to set um, a reminder to say, hey, you know, this is coming up. And they also say, if you have a smartphone, here's how you set it up to sync to your smartphone and send you text messages on upcoming things as well. Parents can do the same. We tell them, go ahead and you know, link these in if you have a, a Gmail account. So we no longer use the homework hotline. Instead, we're using this for that. Uh, the other one that I mentioned was the conference scheduling. Parents can come here. And again, we've got a nice handout that explains how all this works. Gives them a couple little introductory things. And then when they click here to log in, um, I've got this open in another window here. What they end up getting is this screen where um, it takes them to a Google site. So we're using Google Sites along with Google Calendar kind of merged together here. And um, they have to log in, uh, but they're using the same username and password they use for like the PIV to check on grades. We've just synced all that. So they didn't have to learn anything new. They're using the same stuff they've used for other services. But they can come in here and they can view the middle school staff. And they'll see the staff alphabetically, but they'll also see them by team or subject. And basically, they can come in and say, okay, I want to schedule a parent-teacher conference with that teacher. Now, the teacher has gone in ahead of time, and they have created what's called appointment slots on their calendar. That is different than normal events. An appointment slot is a special event that you can then share for other people to see so that they can claim which slot they want. And you don't have to worry about your personal information showing up on the calendar. It just shows the appointment slots. So if I choose a teacher here, It'll open this up now. We're already past conferences, so I'll have to back up a week or you won't see anything here. But what they would see is they would see these slots, and typically there was like a dozen or so slots there. But when you come in and go, oh, I'll take that for 30 slot, the parent would click on it, gives them a chance to fill in any information if they want. They don't have to. I won't really save it. But if I did, it would now take that slot off the list. It would no longer be available for other parents to schedule. And um, then the teacher gets an email that says, you know, they've scheduled. It shows up on the teacher's calendar. And um, that's how we did our parent-teacher conferencing um, this time around for our middle school. The high school is planning to, to do this in the spring as well. And it worked really well. You know, for a brand new system, you know, we really did not have hardly any glitches. It, it worked real well. So that's just another example of how calendars are being used. Okay. Um, pause there for a second. So that was email and calendar. Next up is Google Documents. 
All right. Um, so uh, I already mentioned earlier the whole idea of collaborating and sharing, and that really is wonderful. It really helps a lot. Um, you, whether you're doing a lesson, you're brainstorming something, uh, you're grant writing, all of those sort of things you can share a document and all work on together. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the student writing process. Let's say there's a student who is, you know, you're doing a term paper. Well, usually, if you think about in the past, this would probably be something over a period of several weeks, maybe even a couple of months as they're writing this term paper. There's probably going to be drafts and revisions and back and forth and back and forth. Well, what's nice about this is the student can create the original document and share it with you as the teacher. When they're done with the first draft, you can read it and you can add comments in the margins to the side without actually harming the real document itself. You just put them these comments in the margin that the student can then see, can then reply to your comments, can make their changes, and then you can go back and forth as they revise this document over several weeks, and eventually when the final document's done, you can put a grade on it. That entire time, not a single piece of paper has been printed. Instead, you and the student have just been communicating back and forth through notes in the margins, and you can go back through the history of that document, and you can see every change that's ever been made to it. So if I open up any Google document, I can go into the history, and I can pick any date, any time, and it will revert that document back to that earlier version, and I can see what did the student change. What, what, you know, I suggested they made a change. Did they? Yep, yes, they did, or no, they didn't. Or if it's a group project, I can see who made the change. It color codes them by the students. I can see which student spent the most time on this and which student did or did not contribute. Um, speaking of student use of it, another one that is not what I can take credit for is uh, collaborative student note taking. I've got a link here out to an article on this. There was a student who, uh, here's an article, I'll pull it up, um, was talking about using Google Docs to tag team class note taking. And so what these kids have decided to do is to, in a, in a group, pretty much, have a single doc for class notes, and they all work together on it during class and afterwards. And between the group of them, they're catching things that on their own they might have missed. And so they're doing collaborative student note taking. Just another great idea for how you could use that. Um, uh, other things, um, shared resources. Uh, we're starting to work on this in our district now where we're using Google Docs to not just share as documents but to share as collections. In Google Docs, you can make individual documents, but you can also put them in folders called collections. And you can share entire collections. And of course, more efficient meetings. Uh, this one is, is just de definitely worth mentioning. Uh, we have a, a tech committee that meets um, every two weeks, and there's always a lot of stuff to cover. There's never enough time to cover it. And so what we started doing, and I'll open up a copy here of our tech meeting, is I started making a Google Doc ahead of time, and then we each have a color. Each of us is color coded, and a couple days before the meeting, I send out this Google Doc and I say, guys, share your topics for the high school and the middle school and the elementaries. And so the teachers, or excuse me, the tech team does that. We all go in and start typing in our questions and concerns and stuff. What ends up happening is half of the things get fixed before we even have the meeting because we just get a chance to discuss them in that way. But then this is the shared document so that we all can refer back to it and know what, what we need to work on. Google Spreadsheets, Google's version of um, like Excel. Oops, went too far there. Sorry about that. There we go. Uh, certainly, you can use it in any way you would use Excel. So, I mean, it'd be a great way to collect, you know, data and analyze it. So, I mean, if you're if you're doing that already with Excel, that translates right over to Google Spreadsheets. And you can make charts and graphs and draw conclusions and make predictions. So, all of those normal things you would do with a spreadsheet are certainly true. You could use it for your gradebook. We we don't, but there are gradebook uh, templates out there that you certainly could use. Another thing we do with spreadsheets, and I've taken out student names, so it'll be okay to show you this, uh, but is to collect information from the staff. I don't know if you ever need to do that, collect textbook numbers or collect scores or collect information from the staff. We do recommendations usually around, you know, uh, third nine weeks or so for the next school year where the teachers have to recommend what classes the kids should take. And there's a lot of information that they like to have in a matrix so that they can make those recommendations. And we need to collect that information together. It's things like the Pimsleur test if they're doing um, a foreign language or there's an algebra prognosis test. 
uh, if they're going to be good in algebra. There's uh, subjective scores that they might have and so forth. And so what I do is I simply create a Google spreadsheet, just copy and paste the kids' names in, which I've X'd out here, so you don't have to worry about that. Just as easy as it is to collect information, I also use this to share information out. Um, students all have an ID and a password, and sometimes they forget them. And it's good for the teachers to be able to look up what's the kid's password if they're not sure. So I make a Google spreadsheet. I have the kids' IDs, their names, their passwords. I share that spreadsheet out to the teachers. So at any time, they can go in and open up that spreadsheet to look up a student's ID and password if, they, if the child forgets it. And it's only shared with those teachers, so nobody else can see it, and it's, and it's secure. So spreadsheets can be used in lots of ways other than just making a graph. Okay, Google presentations, not a whole lot to say other than that. What you can do in PowerPoint, you can do the same thing in Google presentations. You're watching a Google presentation right now. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles of PowerPoint. You don't have quite the same animation and sound effects and things like that, which maybe is okay. Uh, you may not want all of those in there, uh, but it does do a nice, solid presentation. And like I mentioned, our students have been, have been doing that. Um, a quick example that I don't know how applicable this is for all students, but when we had that really bad snow last winter, I don't know if you guys were out of school, we were out quite a few days, we just had a lot of snow last winter. One of our teachers came back from those snow days out and said, hey guys, I'm sorry, to their, to their class, said, we were scheduled for the computer lab. Um, over these last few days, and we had snow days, so we missed those days, and the lab's booked after that. We've lost our lab time, so we were going to do this Google Presentations project. I guess we're just not going to do it this time. And the kids are like, what are you talking about? We already did it. She's like, what are you talking about? She goes, well, you know, it's all online. We were at home. We had nothing to do. The kids just did their presentations through Google Presentations collaboratively while they were home on snow days. Now, this was a gifted and talented class, so it may not apply. These are the kids that go, hey, you forgot to assign us homework. So, you know, it may not apply. But the technology is there to allow that kind of stuff. It's just, so she was like, seriously, you guys are done. They go, yeah. She goes, so can somebody present? Yeah, we're ready. OK. And they just walked up and started presenting. You know, and they were just ready to go. And they didn't have to bring in floppy disks or, or excuse me, flash drives or CDs. They just shared the presentation with the teacher. The teacher opened it up on the screen, and boom, they're ready to go. So we've been using Google Presentations in place of, of PowerPoint. Now, Google Forms uh, doesn't have a direct correlation in the traditional office. Whoops, sorry about that. The, the traditional office suite. Google Forms is um, a tool where you can create surveys, quizzes, assessments, any sort of questionnaire, and then send that out to folks. And then they fill out the questionnaire or the survey or the quiz or whatever. And then all the information gets collected back into a Google spreadsheet. So Google Forms and Google Spreadsheets kind of tie together. And once it's in Google Spreadsheets, it can do graphs and charts to show you how people responded. You can analyze the data however you want. Or if you are doing it as a quiz, if you're actually assigning it as a quiz, you can use a plugin called Flubaroo. It's just one of the plugins in Google Spreadsheets, kind of a weird name, but it's called Flubaroo. And it will grade it for you. You take the quiz once and say, this is the key, and then it grades all the rest of them according to that. So uh, Google Forms is that front end that creates those things. We've used it for all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, I'll just go ahead and pull up some examples here that I think I've starred here. So for example, uh, we have a staff change form. I'll show you that one. Give that a second to open. I'll go to this is the data in the background. I'll go to the live form so you can see what it actually looks like. Um, we have staff changes all the time. Somebody gets married, has a new name, somebody retires, we get a new hire, there's long-term sub, somebody's pregnant, they're out for a while, whatever the case. So we created this Google form where our secretaries, our principals, people like that have access to it, and they can come in and say, oh, it's a, a new staff member, or it's a leaving staff member, or it's a changing staff member, and they can choose that and go in, and they can tell us all the things that we need to know. Here's a new staff member. This is their home address, their name, what building they're at, all this sort of stuff. And then we get that information as a tech department, and we know to make all of those necessary changes that we need to. Uh, so that's a quick example of a form. Uh, other forms that we've used, um, our kindergarten registration. We used to do that all on paper, and the parents would come in and do page after page after page after page of that. Uh, here is uh, a copy. There's no data in here. I'm just showing us a copy. But um, our, uh, our kindergarten um, our principal went ahead and put this together last year and used it, and it worked 
perfectly. Uh, parents come in here and instead they just fill out this form, type in the information, check the boxes they need to check and so forth, and it collects all that information together. There's a couple of pages, it goes for a couple of pages there, but it collects it all together and nobody has to try to read handwriting, you know, uh, what's, what's that, and, you know, what number is that or what letter is that. And so we did all of our kindergarten registration collection of information through a Google form this last year. Um, other forms, let's see, uh, this one, teachers sometimes want to request a new book to be added to the approved list. So we have a cute little form that lets them go in and say, hey, I would like to have um, this book added. So we have used a little theme with some books there. They talk about what the name of the book is, the author, describe it a little bit, what grade levels, how would you use it, things like that. And that gets submitted in and then the literary review committee can take a look at that and decide. So that's just a quick example of collecting information through a form. Um, and we could go on and on and on and on about that. So, But we've been using um, forms to get information from parents, from students, from staff, just great ways to pull that information in together. If you do want to learn, though, about how to do the self-grading quizzes, I do have a link to that one here as well. Um, the link will take you out to our Apps User Group site, where you see this is an article written by, by, T, by TJ Houston. He's uh, one of my friends up in, uh, in Huron City Schools, and he uh, sends a lot of good things into the apps user group as well and he talks you through step by step how to set up the self grading quizzes and so there's a nice little article there on the apps user group site that explains how to install the the Fluberoo extension and, and to use that all right and after forms is google sites we'll kind of wrap up on on sites here um, google sites is a web design program and we're using it for for lots of things um, uh, sites for activities and clubs, uh, student portfolios, online learning activities. Let me uh, show you a few of these examples. I think I, for example, uh, here are some sites. Uh, this one is a um, online learning activity by one of our AP um, high school uh, 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 US history teacher. Um, and what he's done is he's made a role playing um, project dealing with slavery where each student goes in and the site gets shared with them and the students go in and they choose to be a character and so there's all these different characters from that historical time period and they go in and then they edit information about that character they put in biographical information some graphics ex excerpts slogans timeline and so on and so on and then as they do things then they are required to go to other characters pages and leave comments as if they were that character responding to things they put there. And he's got all sorts of, you know, handouts here that go through all the different steps of what they're supposed to do. But it's a basically a role playing project that is done through through Google Sites. So that's a quick example. Uh, another Google site on the other end of the spectrum is at the, at second grade. Uh, one of our teachers at second grade does a portfolio project with the kids. So these are second graders. They each get a Google site created where they have an About Me page where they go in and they put in information about themselves. They upload a little web that they made an About Me web that they did in like Kidspiration or something like that. There's a science blog page where they go in and the kids actually type in what I learned in science this week. Um, there's a writings page where they upload a, either a scanned image of something they've written or a Google Doc that they've typed in or just plain text. Now, yes, there are parents assisting them with this, but they learn and they, and they get pretty good at it. Now, I won't show you one with it all filled out, but uh, it's really cute. They've got their pictures in there and so forth. And so these are second graders who are doing a, a portfolio that kind of captures everything they've learned throughout the year using Google Sites. And then, of course, we're using Google Sites for just all sorts of pages. So like our community education site has now been converted over to Google Sites. When people want to sign up for a class, it's a Google form. It's all completely Google-based there. Um, we're, we're converting our tech page over to a Google um, Sites page. So this is going to be our new tech page. Uh, it's almost done. I'm getting that finished up. And uh, I could pick many, many, many other ones. Our, our high school guidance department has switched over to Google Sites, and so that's all done through a Google site. And like I said, Teen Institute's doing it now, and Student Council, lots of other ones are switching over to it. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good overview of some different things you could use. As resources, I would recommend, of course, Apps User Group. There's also a great Lakes User Group that Google sponsors. Again, I started the Apps User Group 
when there weren't other user groups around. Since then, Google has launched some of their own user groups, and there's one for the Great Lakes area, which is an excellent user group as well, and of course, our technology site. Uh, and of course, this entire presentation is as well on the Apps User Group site, so you can open it at any time you want and have access to all of the links inside of that. Uh, plus, this is also opening the door for the Bring Your Own Technology, the BYOT initiatives we're working on, because if it's all cloud-based and it's, all you have to do is get to the Internet, then the kids can bring in their laptops and they can bring in their tablets or their smartphones, and we piloted that last year at the high school, and we're going to extend it more this year, and this is really helping us move more in that direction. Thank you.